OK. OK, let's talk about this, the reaction mechanism. OK, so you can see on the slide, I wrote two things, right? The first thing is actually the CH3Br plus OH minus, and it gives you CH3OH plus Br minus. This molecule, this tetrahedral uh, structure, OK, when you interact with OH minus, OK, and then people do the experiment, OK, and measure the differential rate law. They found out the reaction rate is equal to a rate constant K times the concentration of your CH3Br and the OH minus concentration to the first power. Reaction number two, CH33 CBr plus OH minus. OK, so I will tell you the structure of that. That will be actually just. Formula wise, they actually looks very similar, right? However, kinetics wise, the rate only proportional to the first order of your CH33 CBr. Why? In the first reactions, OK, it's first order to both reactants. And in the second one, it's actually only related to the first of the first order of one of the reactant, not both. So when scientists see these reactions, they got very confused in the very beginning. And later on, they realize, OK, the reason this is actually proportional to the first order of both reaction species is because the OH minus, OK, need to actually first encounter the CH3Br, OK? You need to actually attack your CH3Br so that your Br can leave. They can produce the final product, CH3OH plus Br minus. And then because in this step, the key thing is actually these two species need to encounter with each other in the right orientation, then the reaction will happen. In other words, in this specific reaction, the rate determining step is actually how fast these two species can encounter each other in the correct orientation. So things actually involve two species at the same time. That's why you see the first order on both reactants. Mm -hmm. So use that analogy. Can you explain why for these reactions it only re only proportional to the CH33 CPR to the first power? There's no OH minus term here, right? Mm -hmm. Why so? The main differences between these two molecules is this, right? On the top, you have CH3. At the bottom, is actually CH3. You have three CH3 here. So what it does is actually it provides a, a very strong stereo hindrance. Okay, why means is actually D3 is actually so big. Under this case, your OH cannot even see the carbon. You cannot see this guy. So since you cannot see it, you cannot actually hit it. Okay, it, so that carbon is actually well protected by the three CH3 group. So OH minus is not going to be helpful. So later on, what scientists realize is actually this guy need to first undergo a dissociation itself first. So it's going to form this. You need to form this first. OK, so like these things is actually the carbon is actually more open because right now the bromide leaves, they actually give you more space for the OH to actually attack it. And in this step, OK, this dissociation mm -hmm. and to create this species is actually a ray determined step. So once this is formed, your OH can actually hit this one quickly to form the product. And then because this is actually a ray determined step, that's why it is actually a contributor to your red laws, OK, but not, the, not both, OK? So this example is just to let you know the rate determined step, OK, will be the determined step for your red laws. 
Using this concept, how do scientists actually propose a reasonable reaction mechanism? Okay, there are actually a few terminology to go through first. The first things they create is actually so-called the elementary steps. The rule number one is actually the sum of the elementary step must give the overall balanced equation. And then the second is actually the mechanism must agree with experimental determined law. Of course, I mean, you propose a mechanism into fit into the data you observe. OK, so this must be true. And then the good thing about the elementary step is that once you write out the elementary step, you can simply write out the corresponding red law based on your elementary step. For example, if today you have an elementary step like this, the O3 become O2 plus O. If this is a elementary step, then your red law will simply equal to a red constant K times k to the first power because the coefficient is actually one. If today the elementary step is like this, O3 plus O3, that give you three O2s. OK, so we can write this as 2O3 become 3O2. If that is the case, OK, then you can directly write out the red law is going to equals to k times a to the Second power. And if your reactant species are different, so if it's A plus B that give you the product, then the red law will simply equal to K times A times B concentration. One more example. If today your reaction species is like this, okay, 3O2 that give you 2O3, okay, then basically you have three species adding up that give you product then the rate is just going to equal to your rate constant K times your reactant to the third power because you have one, two, three. If it's actually 2A plus 1B, then your rate is going to equal to K times A to the second power times B to the first power. In other words, the coefficient for your elementary step is simply the stoichiometry of your reactant. This is only true when you have elementary step. It is not true for your final equation. It's just only true for your elementary step. You can only do this when the question says, OK, these are the elementary step. OK, then you can just write out the corresponding red law based on the equation. So this is very important because many students actually, you know, they, they mix the concept about the elementary step and the overall reaction equations. So let's give you one example so that you will see how these things is going to work. Here you can see there is actually one equation. OK, so this is the overall equation. This is the overall balanced equation. And then here you see step one, two, three. These are the three elementary steps. So in your homework, you're going to see this quite often. OK, it will give you actually a few steps of the elementary step and then ask you what is the red laws. OK, and then how do how, how are you going to solve this? OK, there are actually a few things you want to follow. The first thing is actually you need to write out. OK, so once you have the elementary step, you want to make sure when you all your elementary step add up, OK, it must go back to the final balanced equation. So if you look at here, what you should do first is actually first highlight your reactants. In this case, what is your reactant? OK, so that's your reactant. What is your product? Two O2. and O2, right? So what I will do is actually, when I see my elementary steps, I will actually first highlight my reactant as well my product. So once I do this, 
once I see my all my elementary steps, I know the red can just N205, right? And the product will be just N02 plus O2. When you add this step one, two, three together, okay, when you add it up, okay, you need to actually go back to the original equations, right? So if we let's do this, okay, let's see whether it actually go back to the original equations, okay? So here you can see there are N2, 2 N03, right? And then there's 2 N03. So this is going to cancel out when you add up. And then NO, NO is going to cancel out, right? When you add it up. When you add it up, you can see there are 2, 3, 4, 5 on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, there's 1, right? So this one will cancel out 1 on the right-hand side. So in the end, when you add NO up, on the, right, on the left hand side, you have 2 and 2, O5. On the right hand side, you have 4 and O2 plus O2. So let's actually the first step you do. Okay, make sure when you add it up, this actually go back to the original equation. Many times, OK, when they give you this type of questions, OK, they actually don't give you this coefficient. Then if they don't give you like coefficients, OK, when you add it up, it didn't actually go back to the original equation. Then to actually, you know, plug in some coefficients, OK, so that when you add up all your elementary steps, it give you back to the original balanced equation. OK, so that's always the first step. OK, so assuming we can do this first step without any problems. Right? Then the second step is actually write down what is your reactance, which we know is actually N2O5. What is your product, which we know is actually NO2 plus O2. All the things that cancels out when you add up your elementary step, we call an intermediate. So in this case, your intermediate will be NO3 and NO. The next thing is actually you want to derive your red laws from your elementary step. So we know the red law ultimately is determined by the slowest step among your elementary steps. In other words, step two will be your slowest step in this case, right? So what you can do is actually you just write out the red law. Okay, remember we can actually write out the red law is going to equal to array constant K times the reactant species, right? In this case, it's actually NO2 concentration to the first power. NO3 concentration to the first power. Once you know which one is the slowest one, then you can easily write out the red law based on the elementary step. However, we know when you have these equations, okay, the final equations here, right? From the things we learned, we know the final red law is going to equal to your K, let's say the final red constant, times your reactant species actually N2O5 to certain power, right? So this is actually what we learned from our previous lectures, and this is what we learned from today's lectures, OK? When you look at this two, you realize none of this is actually your reactance, right? So what you need to do is actually to substitute this species so that after the substitutions, after your rate constant is actually react is your reactance. So how do you do this? The way you do this typically through the equilibrium constant. So if you look at the first elementary steps, you can write out your equilibrium constant capital K. Okay. K1 is going to equal to NO2 to the second power, NO3 to the second power divided by your N2O5 to the second power. So I can move my N2O5 to the left 
and then take the square root of this, then I know my NO2 concentration times NO3 concentration is going to equal to the square root of equivalent K1 times N2O5 to the first power. Then you will realize this is just this. So you can actually substitute these guys with these terms. OK, so your rate can be rewritten as K times the square root of K1 times N2O5 to the first power. And this combination of the this constants is actually your KF times N2O5 to the first power. So up to this point, you know your red law is the rate is equal to rate constant KF times your N2O5 to the first power. So that you know the N here is going to equal to one. So it's actually very simple, right? First, make sure that all those elementary steps when they add up, they give you the final balanced equation. Second step, identify the reactant, product, and intermediate. Third step, write out the red law based on the rate determined step and check out the species here. If it is not the same as your reactant species, you need to use equilibrium constants to do some substitutions. So eventually, the red law you have, this species is actually belongs to your reactant. Those are the four steps that you need to pay attention to to finalize and determine the red law based on your elementary steps. On the board is actually a summary about the steps that you need to know to actually solve those problems. Okay, 